Welcome to Session 6 of the Fractions, Decimals, and Percents mini-course. This session will explain the connections between fractions and decimals. The objectives of this session include using paper strips to demonstrate the connections between fractions and decimals, using calculators to find patterns in the decimal representation of fractions, and finally, introducing the NCTM Reasoning and Proof Standard. We will begin this session with a 15-minute review of last session's homework. We will follow that with about an hour experimenting with fraction strips, calculators, and other tools. We will then spend about 15 minutes on the NCTM Reasoning and Proof Standard, and then close with about 15 minutes of reflection on what we learned during this session. Good evening. Welcome to Session 6. I'm glad you all made it here tonight. Tonight we're going to start off with the homework problems from last week from session five where we were talking about decimals with adding decimals and their positioning. So you're going to take a couple of minutes to discuss what you found at your table with someone else and then I'll have two volunteers that will come up. Okay, we're going to discuss the homework problems from last week. Last, uh, last session, we have an addition error. We have an addition error where we have three and one tenth plus one and sixty-three hundredths, and I have two parents that are going to discuss how they work with their children over, over uh, the rest of the week to explain how they showed it to them. Me and my baby Don, yes, ma'am. What me and my baby done, I looked at the 3.1 plus 163, and that, that problem was one decimal, nine, and it came up to 4.73. What I done, I put, when I did it, I added it. Okay, we had another homework problem, it was number two. Well, is this two and three hundredths? No, ma'am. What is this? It's, it's two and three tenths. Okay. How do you write two and three hundredths? Two and three hundredths. Good job. Right. Okay, Ethan said that there's a number in the tenths place. There's a number in the tenths place. Okay, can any student tell me how much money this is? A two and three tenths? How much money is that, Mariah? It's two dollars thirty cents. Students will say that this amount is greater than this amount. It's not because more. Eighty cent or fifteen cent. I would rather have um, the most, 80 cent, because um, because there's an extra digit right there, so I just put the zero down. Okay. Thank you. Okay, take out your decimal strips that you made in the last class. One of these is labeled in fractions, and the other one is labeled with the decimals. If you have these from last class, You didn't bring back your folders? You only have one? You have yours? Okay. The ones that we made in last class. Okay, I would like for you to line them up and place them next to each other. If you line them up and place them next to each other, you will observe that six tenths is equivalent to six tenths. You will see here that six tenths is equivalent to six tenths. Okay? This means that they are equivalent. In the next activity, we will find decimal equivalents or approximations for some other fractions. Okay? I have given you a Ziploc bag that contains the ones with the color. You're going to take out fraction strips A and B. 
We're going to take out fraction strips A and B. And you are working with your partner. You're going to cut out the force. One person at the table will cut out the force. It's already been labeled for you. It's from zero to one hole. Okay. Okay. You're going to notice that below each strip is a fraction family name. Below each strip is a fraction family name. You're going to cut out the strip for force. And notice that force are already marked for you. The force are already marked for you. Your job is to cut, mark, and label the other strips according to the fraction family. You're going to cut, mark, and label the other strips according to the fraction family. You will not be using a, a ruler to measure, you will, to mark the strip. You can fold or compare the marks on another strip. Marks do not need to be perfect, but should be reasonably accurate. Okay? One person at the table should be cutting out fraction strip A. Another one should be cutting out fraction strip B. Yes. Okay. You now have a 12 by 18 black construction sheet of paper. And what we're going to do is take our fraction strips in order. <laughs> Okay, uh, Ms. Bama and Kyler have put in, they put in their strips, their fraction strips. They have halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, eighths, tenths, and twentieths. They have them all. Make sure your zeros are as close to the bottom as possible. Make sure the zeros are close to the, to the bottom as possible. Okay, what we're going to do now, if you have your decimal strip from last week, you have your decimal strip last week. We're going to try to find decimal equivalents for your fractions. Okay? If I take my decimal strip and place it next to the one half, what would be my decimal equivalent for one half? Hmm? It'd be 0.5, exactly. Mariah, how else can we say 0.5? You can say five tenths. Chance, do you have another way? Um, half. You can say half. And what's another way we can read it as a decimal? Hunter? It could be five tenths. Okay. Okay, we could say zero and five tenths. Okay, you have another one? It, could, it is 50%. Good job. She jumped up there and grabbed the 50%. Good job. Okay? I'm going to take the decimal strip. I'm going to put it next to the fifths. I'm going to put it next to the fifths. What will be the decimal equivalent for two fifths? What will be the decimal equivalent for two fifths? It will be four tenths. It will be four tenths. And how much? 40%. Or 40%. Good job. Okay, we're going to need our decimal strips. We're going to need our fraction strips for the rest of the sessions. Okay?